It's okay, right? So <laughs> these comments really crack me up on the on the Meetup page. So uh, someone asked, okay, how does someone have 40 years of JavaScript experience? And I really love the last comment up there by Ismail. Is Ismail here by any chance? Ah, oh, such a shame. <laughs> so he was talking about a web time travel API. I really love the comment. Uh, so, yeah. So I'm Eddie, um, Eddie van Burken. Um, and I was wondering, has ev uh, anybody of you ever used a Cordova or PhoneGap, Ionic, stuff like that? Yeah, great. I, I, was, I was thinking. Uh, so you also, you made mobile apps, right, with JavaScript. So that's a right audience for me. And you may have also used any of my plugins in the past because I, I do a lot of Cordova PhoneGap plugins and also NativeScript plugins these days. So this is where I live, my GitHub. And um, here's a top tip for you as an open source developer. Try not to make these top bars green. That's the weekend days. <laughs> you should do other things. So also, don't take up so many projects. Just do one or five at most or something. I have a lot of small projects. Some get a bit larger, but you get a lot of issues and not that much pull requests, unfortunately, and emails and tweets and Slack messages. So it's, it's a bit much. And all this stuff is published to NPM. And I was looking at this graph. It's, it's the, the, uh, my, the download sums of all my packages that I published there. And only last year, it was 13,000 a month. And now I'm almost at a quarter million a month. So stuff is getting more popular. And you get more to do as well. So as you can see, there's a lot of commits. And there's a lot of stuff coming in. So how the hell do I do it? Because I also have a day job, by the way. This is mostly just for fun. Uh, some of it is paid. But I also have a day job. So how do I do that? Well, the answer is simple. And it also explains why I have 40 years of JavaScript experience. <laughs> I have a bunch of clones running around working for me. And they come in pretty handy because I only have 30 minutes to cram a lot of content in this presentation. So let me introduce a few of my clones. It's Mr. Cool. It's Mr. Nerdy, Mr. Siesta, and Mr. Sporty over there. Thank you. So let's take a little step back and talk about mobile app frameworks. So there's a lot to choose from them uh, these days. And uh, well, I asked one of my clones to create a nice and handy diagram. Um, here it is. And I assume you can all read it, right? No? Didn't think so. So it's time for my first clone. It's Mr. Sporty, and he has a black belt in diagram, so that comes in handy. Oh, it's a black sweatband, actually. <laughs> so let me walk you through this diagram now. Which whole app framework is right for you? OK, do you want a native user interface? Uh, no, I don't want a native user interface. I just want to use a web queue. OK, use PhoneGap, Cordova, Ionic, Anthem, anything that runs in the web queue. But if you're not sure, OK, ask yourself, you live in the year 2015, or do you have a lot of resources, people, skills, to pull off a native iOS and Android app? Then go ahead and do that. But if you, like us, live in the hybrid era, and most important question here is, is performance important to your app? If you're not sure, okay, do you need full native SDK access? Nah, probably not. If for a platform specific UI important, then UI that upgrades with newer OS versions. Um, well, no, not really. Okay, then still, you may consider doing a phone gap for Cordova based app. But if any of those questions you ask yes, then go over here and well, you can ask yourself which framework or language do you like most? Like, is it C sharp? Okay. Then do you need to share code with web? Oh, no, not really. All right, then Xamarin is probably the one for you. But if you need to share code, then you have to consider other languages. Uh, but otherwise, if you're very much fond of Dart, like I am, um, the game, not the language, then you can use Flutter. But it's still an EGA. It's by Google, and it's pretty nice, but you can also not share code with web. But if you like React, then you can share code with web all you like. Do React Native, no issues there. Um, but if you like any other framework or language like Angular, and that's NativeScript with Angular, and if you don't like frameworks at all, you can use NativeScript with just plain old JavaScript or TypeScript. And if you like to do cool kit on the block like me, then go with NativeScript as you. And uh, now I'm off, earning some more medals. Cheers. Thank you, Mr. Sporty. So a lot of those frameworks pointed to 
native script, right? So uh, not a coincidence because I'm talking about native script. And by the way, if you want nice native script socks, there are a lot of socks over there. And there's also a box so everybody can grab a pair after the talk. Um, so where do I start with native script, Vincent is wondering. Well, we have a playground, Vincent. And Vincent will now show how it works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Down there, all right. So, yeah, well, thank you, Vincent. <laughs> that was really helpful. As usual, I have to do it myself. So, go to play.nativescript.org, and, um, well, I have a clone set up for you. It's Mr. Nerdy. Take it away, man. Mr. You're on, man. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, don't answer that. I don't really care anyway. Let me show you around at uh, play.nativescript.org. So I started a new NativeScript plus JavaScript project uh, and the files are over here. And at the bottom you have these components you can throw on the canvas and this is your canvas where you can see there's a few labels on the screen already. Um, so if you're happy then you can scan a QR code with your app. In this case I have my iPhone 10 with the Playground app, scan it and there's also an Android phone which I'm going to use to scan the QR code as well. And you can see that it fires up the app and it loads your playground. So to prove to you that it is connected, let's throw away these labels and throw something else on the canvas. So let's look for a pie chart and let's look for a progress bar. So what you can see here is that the pie chart is as a data series bound to an items property and the property is called pie source and there's also a property called progress value for the progress bar and let me change this real quick i can see that there's a stack layout with a class home panel and in the css file there's the home panel as well now i'm going to align everything to the top because the progress bar wasn't in view but now it is so let's go to our uh, our observable which is tied to the uh, XML file. It has this progress value and this by source uh, property. And let's refresh that. The progress bar should now initialize at zero. And to make it a bit more interesting, let's throw in something I've prepared. If there's a progress bar that's filling for every 10 milliseconds, it adds a 1% uh, to the progress bar. So that's how you use. Uh, what about TypeScript, man? Yeah, I was just going to say that it's also TypeScript. Thank you for interrupting. So NativeScript plus TypeScript uh, is another flavor you can use in the playground. And it's, oh, there goes my TypeScript sticker. But you're up, buddy. Let's stick in there and let's throw JavaScript away. So it's the same thing, really. It starts out uh, similarly. You can uh, throw away some labels and you can throw, uh, for instance, a uh, that calendar on the campus is just pretty nice. There you go. And yeah, it, once you're happy, you can uh, save this project and you can copy this URL and share it with your buddies. They can install it on their device as well. So that's really nice to prototype some stuff. And also, if there's a, a, a bug or anything in your code or in the manuscript code, you can share that playground URL with anyone, anyone else that can take a look at it. And also, once you're really happy and you want to develop locally on your machine instead of in the cloud, you can press the download button over here, and then you'll get all the sources on your file to get up and running with the management CLI or site or anything. Yeah, you're like done that. yet? So. Done? Oh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks. So that's pretty nice. Sorry, sorry for the corny Dutch joke. So the diagram mentioned native script with Angular. Um, so now we've seen JavaScript and TypeScript, um, but Angular, well, personally, I, I really love that framework and also Vue, but Angular just a little more at the moment. Um, so how do we get started with that? And um, perhaps the, the man with the microphone needs to come back because we're going to ask Mr. Siesta to explain it to us. Hey, man. Wake up. Uh -huh. Um, oh, is it that time already? You're up, man. Well, yeah, sure. I'll show you around in the playground from NativeScript with Angular. I just started this new app, and it generates this 
project for you. And open the app module where you can see that there's an app routing module being included in here. But this file, so if a blank route is hit, that's when the app starts, you'll be redirected to home. And this is my favorite feature by far. It's oh, lazy loading. I love it. Oh, um, yeah, and so it loads the home module. And the home module has a routing module as well. It loads the home routing module. Of course, you can structure this any other way, but it's a nice way to structure your Angular app, I think. So it has a route, a blank route that uh, loads the home component. And the home component, you've seen this in Angular 2 to 5. This is 5, actually. It's all the same way to declare your component. There's this template. URL, which is the HTML file and there's styles as well. So let's open up the HTML file. And you can see that there's an action bar, and let's add something to the action bar. Let's search bar in this case. Let's try it again. And save that. And also there's this scroll view which we will blow away and replace with something I've prepared already. This red layout that renders images. And every image in here has a text, 256, and an NGF, like any other Angular NGF you're used to, which determines whether or not this image can be rendered based on if there's no search phrase or the search phrase matches one of these numbers. So let me try this on my phone over here. And let me input one and two, and nothing happens. And that's expected because in our component, the playground has um, automatically generated this search phrase file. <laughs> and now I'm doing voice input for some reason. And this search phrase is, well, initialized as nothing, and I can initialize it as two in this case. Come on, internet is still working. And then you'll see that uh, this property is bound to the few but I'm binding it like this. It's not two-way binding. So if I type down something, it's not sent back to the model. And because of that, this value here doesn't change. But as you can use any Angular feature you like, you can also use ng model over here. Save that. And now you can see that if I change this two to something else, four, five, or nine, Everything is working as expected, right? So you can use any Angular feature in the playground as you expect, and in JavaScript as well, of course. And now I'm back to my siesta. See you. Night, night, man. Thank you. Very nice. So you can use Angular in much the same way as JavaScript and TypeScript in NativeScript, uh, using largely the same UI. Those components are all the same UI, uh, and it, it automatically renders uh, well, uh, code behind properties for you as well in the playground. So, but we also saw that you can use few with native script, right? So, how many of you are using few these days? I'm wondering. So that's quite a few, right? So, <laughs> <coughs> probably because it's new and cool. So let's ask Mr. Cool how that works with native script. Hey, man. Hey, Eddie, how are you doing? Good. Time for a drink already. Yeah, man, it's almost midnight over here. <laughs> I'm kind of relaxed a little, right? Yeah, sure. I have to check out the few yet. Uh, awesome yeah. joke. <laughs> so if you add a new uh, management plus few yes uh, project to the playground, you'll get something that looks like this. There's a few with a template, which should be pretty familiar to you if you've used few at all. But let's add a few things so it can show off some feature. So here's a time picker which has data binding to an hour property and a minute property. And those properties have been added to uh, the data section over here. And it will just return the current hour and current minute. And in both cases, it's 2 past 12 already. So I told you it was midnight almost. So you can, uh, you can scroll these. Up. I'm trying to use a simulator, but it's actually a real device that I've connected. So let me scroll these babies so other values that you can see that it works, and there's also an Android device lying around here. And you can do the same. So now let's add something else. For instance, a list picker. 
And this will also render a few pre-configured things. In this case, uh, a country list, where I'll scroll over here, and I'll scroll over there, and you'll see it changing. And it has added uh, list picker countries property and a selected picker index to your data section. You can change that so the initial value will be something else than the first item. So now the first item selected is Bulgaria, so the third item, the second index, right? So now the last thing I'd like to show you is you have data, you have template, but there's also methods in uh, view. So you can add those as well. And I want to add a method that console logs uh, the selected index when you change the country selector. So what we have here on the list picker, there's an items which has been bound, there's a key model which has been bound to the currently selected index. But if you change something, um, there's a selected index change event that is fired, and you can bind that to a function of your own. So I'll bind that to uh, changed country, something like that. So this is a method that I can reference here. Um, so there will be a change country method, which is a function which has arguments, and it, uh, the implementation looks like, um, well, console log, like I said, and what I want to log is the, there's an object over here which has a selected index property. So let's see if that works as advertised. So let's open the device log over here, and on my iPhone, I'm scrolling to the United States, which is the last index. And the first index is Australia, which is index zero, and as you can see on the Galaxy S8, I've connected as well, I'm scrolling to the first item, and there you can see the selected index being logged as well. So I think that's that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'll hand it over back to you, Eddie, and uh, cheers. And by the way, make sure you give these nice folks a uh, new sticker, because they're pretty awesome. See ya, cheers. Oh man, so that's Mr. Cool for you, making promises I can't keep, but instead of the stickers I have these socks, right? So uh, grab them from there later on. So working with Vue is a similar to Angular and TypeScript and J uh, JavaScript as well, so that's pretty nice. So is everything perfect then in the playground? Uh, well, no, of course it isn't. Uh, there's a few things it doesn't support, like uh, .few files, but you can download your project and then use a Webpack template we have and then use few files actually uh, with all the IDE support that you'll get from that. And debugging, well, um, so there's a device that runs this wrapper app. Uh, it's a bit hard for a cloud service to debug that device, right? So, but arguably you can still debug because my favorite tool is console log and you saw that that's possible, so. And also, uh, yeah, most plugins with third-party dependencies cannot be used in the playground. Um, you can use all the plugins that don't use third-party libraries, like CocoaPods and uh, AAR files, uh, and a few have been supported uh, in the wrapper app. And if you want to know which ones, then you can connect an app, uh, a device, to the playground, and then you can see the entire list of uh, supported uh, native script plugins here. And also, you can download the project here uh, to run it in well, the NativeScript CLI uh, or Sidekick, which is uh, a nice way to, uh, for instance, deploy iOS uh, apps on a Windows platform. So let me give you a little demo talking about plugins. That's my uh, work, daily work, really. Uh, that's what I love and do. So let's show me, let me show you a few. I hope that, yeah, they're here already. Let me find my mouse. So I have this simulator over here, and I have a real device lying around over here, and I have this plugins app. I have to look behind me because I don't have it mirrored here, so I have to be a bit rude and look there. So you may be wondering what, what's wrong with the monitor. Why is the, at the top, why is it lighter than at the bottom? Well, actually, it's the gradient plugin, which has two colors defined, and it will just give you this nice background gradient, so that's a plugin already. And then there, over here, 
there's uh, the material design actual hamburger icon <laughs> with a bit of cheese leaking over your meat. I really love it. So that's the font icon plugin. And there's also this drawer over here, which has uh, a nice transition effect. Of course, there are multiple ways to have a drawer. You can also overlay it over your page and not push it away, etc. cetera. Uh, but in, yeah, I really like this effect. And also, there's this shadow going on just between the blue and the green. And at the bottom, you can see it as well. And that's uh, not by default possible when you install this plugin. Uh, and that's a nice thing of NativeScript. So with your JavaScript or TypeScript, you have full access to the APIs that NativeScript provides you. So NativeScript exposes the iOS and Android SDKs through TypeScript definition files. So you get code completion in your JavaScript and type checking as well. And you can drill down into the native classes if you like and add, well, fancy features like that shadow. So there's a lot of plugins in here, but I'll uh, just not waste your time too much and show you a few cool ones. I really like this one. This is uh, my, well, poor man's Siri, uh, where you can speak. It will uh, parse your language, and, uh, and then it, you will get the text, and then you can parse the text in JavaScript, of course, and do a few fun things. So let me try to say something here. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So it's not too shabby. It, it takes the, the language of your, the default language of your phone, in this case it's set to English. You can also set it to Dutch, of course, and there are about 40 languages or something that support it. It's just the, the, the Siri engine that's powering this. And on Android it's also, I I'm not sure what it's called, but it's the, the sorry, assistant. Yeah, probably that, uh, that's powering the Android side of this plugin. Uh, so you can do also do a few fun things with uh, with these sliders over here. You can change the pitch. I don't know if you've any at any time looked at the Windows font dictionary and uh, took a sip of helium, then you would uh, probably the have heard this. The fox jumps over the lazy dog. And if you're uh, if you're a font the smoker, fox jumps over the lazy dog. then please stop smoking the because eventually you'll sound the like this. Brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Not, not too good, right? So let's put them back in the middle again a bit. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So like I said, I have a few, uh, a few Siri uh, fake things in here. Uh, for instance, this one. What's my schedule today? What's not? Your schedule is clear. Have a nice day. Oh, okay. So, to, oh dear, is this going? Did I just kill it? <laughs> I, I think I just killed it. Oh man. That's that's amazing. Did I? Oh, oh did, no, it's this one. Phew, all right. So what I wanted to do was this. Go to home, add something to my calendar over here, and then that shouldn't be too hard, I think, in this venue. So let's go. Let's go back again here and do it again. Uh, actually, I can just fake this by just tweaking the slider a bit because you, you repeat that last sentence and parse it what, again. What's my schedule today? Find a bar and get drunk in 24 minutes. 24 minutes, guys, so hang on. <laughs> so there's another one which I really like. It's the last one of this plugin, but it's, it's a bit hard to pronounce. Um, here we go. As sure as Kilimanjaro rises like Olympus above the Serengeti. Insurance, insurance. Does anyone Kilimanjaro recognize it? Rises like Olympus above the Serengeti. That sounds like Toto with Africa, right? Yeah, it is. Listen. <laughs> Thank you. I really love this song, but I never knew what he was saying, so. There you go, something with rice and insurance. <laughs> so, but you may wonder why did, you, why, why did it pick up this song? Well, I, I only look for, in this string, for an index of, of three words. If any of those three words match, then it will say, hey, it's Toto with Africa. So it's Kilimanjaro, Olympus, or Serengeti. And I got them all three right, so it was uh, pretty safe this time. So now I can throw... Oh. So this app ships with only one song, so it's a bit hard. <laughs> I can try, but it will fail. 
Uh, oh, here. So let's see if my iPhone will wake up. Yeah, it's awake. So on hardware, you have a few more possibilities. So there's AR, which I'll, I'll come to in a second. And also there's um, mapping. That works in the simulator as well, but it has a bit less grunt than this device. So uh, this is Mapbox powering uh, this, uh, this plugin. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, well, it's not entirely accurate. You'll, you'll probably end up at my neighbors or something. Uh, but yeah, you can press here and get the re directions to my home. But I think it's still set up to uh, use, a way, yeah, use a waypoint. So it's not a direct connection to my home. This will trigger the native script directions plugin. And uh, it's looking for the location here. And you can see there's a waypoint in Bulgaria and then to my home. It sounds like an efficient route, right? So the reason it opened Google Maps in this case is that um, Apple Maps doesn't support waypoints when you open it, open it through a custom URL scheme. So if you pass in waypoints, the plugin will use Google Maps if that's installed. If that's not installed, we'll fall back to web, actually. So let's go back to wherever that app was. You saw something, right? <laughs> so there's also, oh, let's, let's go back to, to mapping once more because I want to show you custom markers. So you already saw that one. And there in Bulgaria, there's a few as well. And here's where my clones live, by the way. This one lives in uh, Austria, Mr. Sporty. And there's one in Finland. He's a bit laid back. And also, I was in Bulgaria, actually, and this truck driver hit me. He, he lives over there, and we had an insurance nightmare with him. But So I'll just leave them in here for fun. And there's also Mr. Siesta is living over here, and there's also one at Aruba, I think. Yeah, that's Mr. Cool. He, he should live in Aruba, but... Oh, he's off the coast. So he's probably in a boat, chilling or something. All right, so, so that's Mapbox. It has a lot of nice features, also a live traffic map and everything, so you can, you can check if, it's, if this is, would be a good time to, to go home. Let's check that real quick, because this is actually the traffic map that, map that I've loaded. So it's mostly green in the direct vicinity. It's a bit more orange, but it's, it's good. So don't drink and drive, by the way. So also, App Icon is a pretty cool plugin. Uh, you can add uh, deep links if you like. And my, like I said, my, my wife is going to love this picture. Sorry if you're watching the live stream. So these are 3D touch icons. And since Android 7.1, you can also have this on Android, which is pretty cool. Uh, and uh, iOS has it since version 8 or 9, I'm not sure, uh, where you can deep link into certain pages of your app. And you can bundle those deep links in your app descriptor, but you can also add them at runtime. So in this case, I'm adding uh, one at runtime, and now you see there's another <coughs> deep link there to mapping. Let's go there, you can see, whoop, now it opens the mapping route. So the routing, of course, your, your app gets a notification uh, that it was loaded with a certain uh, link and then your app needs to route to the correct page. And also with app icon, this is <laughs> a bit funny. Since iOS 10.3, you can change your app icon on the fly. I don't know if any of you saw it happen on, on an app. Uh, you will notice because when you, you press the button to change the icon, you will get this prompt. And there are ways to to remove this prompt, but it's a bit cheating, and Apple was frowns upon it, so uh, the user will be notified when the icon changes. So you, you can't really do a nice background weather-based icon or something, so that's a bit of a bit of a pity. So and the last one I'd like to show you is, uh, is AR. Uh, I did this demo once, and uh, it was very hard to recognize the flooring, so that's why I added this flashlight as well. Uh, but it's actually no problem. So what it does is it tries to detect horizontal planes. In future versions of AR Kit, you'll also be able to detect uh, vertical planes. And AR Core on Android has the similar things. Only that has been uh, there's been a final release like a few weeks ago. So before it was uh, still in beta. Um, but this plugin is now uh, working with uh, AR Kit latest versions and. Uh, on AR core, I'm currently working on uh, getting up to par with what you can do on iOS. So let me remove the statistics and remove the planes. So there's a plane lying over there, and a, a plane can be used to drop stuff on. You don't really need to drop stuff on a plane. You can also just make it float in space. 
uh, but this is nicer for a demo. And let's stop detecting planes as well. And then you can throw stuff on here. So here's the native script boxes. I don't have them on me. So a friend of mine actually has made a stress cube which resembles this uh, layout. It's pretty cool. And he hands it out at, <laughs> at conferences as well. You can, you can also tap and hold to remove these things. And I al always try to stack them, but it's pretty damn hard. But yeah, it's pretty cool. You can see yourself in the background. Yeah, good question. So I'll, I'll draw, the, draw the planes again, and you can see where the platform is, and they tumble off. Uh, in, in, yeah, like when, when they're about 40 meters deep or something, then they get removed from the scene. Uh, otherwise, uh, well, your poor little iPhone 10 processor will give up at a certain point in time. So there, there's this huge plane at the bottom that detects hits of those boxes, and then when it hits it, it removes them. And, well, you, of course, you can do other models as well. So, for instance, here's a tube, which is pretty large. It doesn't fall, it just drops in place. Oh, here, it tries to stand up there. Here's my foot. Yeah, there it is. So that's AR, pretty... Well, I'm not sure how to, how to make a real uh, use case out of it, but it's, it's nice to play with, right? So, sorry. Uh, <laughs> So let's get back to the presentation. Um, I'm almost done. Um, if you'd like the app, to try the app on iOS and Android, you can uh, scan this QR code. On iOS, by the way, you can just use your camera app. It will scan QR codes these days. On Android, you probably have an app or something. And I also have a few resources. Um, if you want to look at that code, so this was a native script with Angular app. That's the source code up there on my GitHub. And if you well, like to see what plugins are out there, uh, which templates are out there for native script apps, there are about 750 plugins or something right now, uh, then go to market.nativescript.org. Um, great native script courses. My t-shirt was sponsored today by nativescripting.com. Um, and also have one to give away, by the way. And if you want to fool around, go to play.nativescript.org. It's, uh, it's pretty fun to, to do. And uh, well, now my clones want to say one last thing to you. Thanks for having us, and have lots of fun using Nativescript. Thank you very much.